Because future-looking statements are inherently subject to risk and uncertainty, our reminder is that you should make any purchasing decisions or investment decisions based on products that are currently commercially available. Hi everyone, thank you so much for joining this session. My name is Kirill Seksanov and I'm a Director of Product Management on the Salesforce platform, with my focus being the entire UI stack. I run teams varying from security to data access, loading, and caching. For the past several years, I've worked on the web platform in multiple aspects, ranging from PWAs, web views, extensions, browser security, W3C standards, and many more, doing my best to evolve the web as the development platform of choice. I'm here today to take you through what's next with Lightning Web Components. I'll be showing that through a combination of slides and demos. Knowing that many of you here are from a diverse set of development backgrounds and could be new to LWC, I'd like to quickly walk through what Lightning Web Components are and how you are able to leverage the framework to build fast, scalable, and secure experiences. As many of you know, we released Lightning Web Components in 2019. It's our modern JavaScript framework, embracing the latest standards that we're building and improving in the open. In the last couple years, we've seen unprecedented adoption of LWC, and I'd like to take this opportunity to thank all of you for making that happen. With the theme of remaining transparent, in two years, we've seen over 15 million components written and used in production. And that number is only growing as you write more code to create new experiences today. So thank you. Thank you for your feedback, ideas, thoughtful scenarios, and thank you for continuing to build on this amazing LWC journey with us. Now on to the fun part with the new features that I'll be covering in this talk. First, I'll walk you through how you can leverage Lightning Base components not only within your Salesforce org, but for your general off-core website development. Second, I'll show how you can add your own custom branding to those components through SLDS styling hooks. And third, I'll talk about our next iteration of the Locker service and show how more and more JavaScript libraries just work. That won't be all though, so be sure to stay tuned to the end of the talk for a sneak peek around rich data access coming soon in LWC. Let's take a deep dive into the Lightning Base Components NPM package, available for any developer to leverage. Base Components are the fundamental building blocks of many Lightning Web Components. They allow developers to leverage and reuse highly performant, accessible functionality across multiple complex components and experiences, empowering you to build modern, scalable user interfaces with high code reuse, giving you more time to focus on your specific customer scenarios. Thanks to the new release of the Base Components NPM package, just prior to Winter 21, you can now leverage them in your custom component development, not only within a Salesforce org, but off-core in any external web experience. Let's take a look at how Pulsar a fictional electric car manufacturer uses Salesforce platform leveraging components to build custom apps on top of their CRM. For example, they built this car configurator that sales reps use in the showroom to configure cars with their customers. Let's go through the steps. I can choose the range, the exterior color, the interior color, and at the end of the process, I can specify the lead this configuration was created for so we can text them a summary of the car they configured. That's a great user experience built with Lightning Web Components. Let's take a look at the code. Now in Visual Studio Code, let's take a look at the car configurator component. The template is just regular HTML. The component is regular JavaScript using the custom element specification. When you use Lightning Web Components, you truly are using the latest web standards. Now back to the Pulsar org. Leveraging Lightning Base Components, a primitive building block like this button, can be used across the entire LWC experience. Let's explore and take a look at the Inventory tab, where Pulsar has decided to leverage LWC to build a more visually appealing experience for their users. 
These are all highly customized components, allowing a Polestar sales manager to quickly glance at the vehicles that are in their inventory. Yet once again, these components are built using the same base component building blocks, including lightning cards, lightning buttons, and more. Amazing components, once again built by the same Pulsar developer. This Pulsar developer worked tirelessly to build this amazing experience inside their Salesforce org, but now their PM has come in with new requirements. The PM would like to provide the same car configurator experience externally as a standalone web app. Pulsar wants their customers to be able to build their dream cars at home, creating a lead in the Salesforce org once the configuration is complete. This doesn't trip up the developer. They're able to quickly recreate this experience externally because LWC is highly portable and designed for code reuse. The Pulsar developer is able to copy and paste most of the code and components using the same base components from the NPM package and light up the same experience externally in no time at all. LWC has the flexibility and portability to scale across multiple customer needs, whether it's traditional Salesforce org development or highly customized off-core solution to meet your ever-changing requirements. That's the power of LWC with the new NPM package for base components, allowing you to leverage the same building block blocks you're used to across all your custom component development. For more information around the base components NPM package, and base components in general, feel free to read over our recently released blog. Now let's take a look at SLDS styling hooks. We've been listening to your feedback and one thing that we know is very important to all customers is the ability to express their unique brand. While sales, the Salesforce Lightning design system is very powerful, providing consistent look and feel across all components in a performant and accessible manner, it lacked when it came to flexibility around customization. There have been many technical solutions for making this customization in the past, but all of those approaches, such as overriding styles or extending the default styles, were fragile. Any changes we would make to the component DOM would result in your styles no longer getting applied. If we updated our styles to meet new requirements, there was a chance our overrides would prevent our styles from getting applied as well. As part of exploring how to solve this problem, we wanted to reimagine how you can better express your look and feel in a more maintainable way, and once again, took better advantage of web standards. Introducing SLDS styling hooks in winter 21 made customizability much easier in a supported way. Styling hooks make our design system more flexible by giving you the opportunity to drastically change the look and feel of a Lightning Web Component simply by editing in CSS. Let's go back to our Pulsar demo in Visual Studio Code and see it in action. This is once again the car configurator component we were looking at in the Pulsar demo. Let's go into the CSS for the component. Styling hooks make it easy to style your components using custom properties. For example, to apply a different background color to all the buttons in this component, in this case, the Pulsar brain color, let's specify these CSS custom properties. After making the change, let's use the installed SFDX VS Code extensions to deploy it live to the Pulsar org. Switching back to the Pulsar org, all we have to do is hit reload. Once the page refreshes, we can see the button color change to the Pulsar brand color that we specified. Styling hooks give you the ability to apply styling changes in a supported manner through SLDS. To learn more, please visit our new blog outlining styling hooks. Now let's move over to everyone's favorite topic, security. Okay, maybe not everyone's favorite, but definitely mine. Jokes aside, one of the really amazing aspects of the LWC framework is that it comes with security built in. Since web development today, including that within a Salesforce org, is a heterogeneous mixture of components and scripts from multiple different authors, not all of which are trusted, we require a layer in the UI protecting all code and experiences from potentially malicious attacks, 
in inadvertent changes. This is where Lightning Locker comes in. It is built-in security, preventing things such as cross-site scripting, attacks, global access to all cookies, and tampering across namespaces. As with any security measure, there are usually consequences which tend to hinder a developer's normal development flows due to restrictions and limitations. With Lightning Locker, we really wanted to focus on usable security, protecting your Lightning web components without the negative impact. So we went back to the drawing board. We're really excited to share with you that we're working on a next generation Locker pilot that will allow you to leverage a greater number of web APIs, have improved support for third-party libraries, and enable you to import and communicate across namespaces, all while maintaining security, privacy, and trust. Sounds promising, right? Let's see all of this in action. We're going to use the same example Pulsar org as earlier, but this time we're going to look at an active support case that Pulsar is investigating. Let's double click on the active case. Here we see the normal case flow, but we are able to switch over to the custom battery diagnostics tab. This allows a Pulsar service manager to monitor the battery performance and usage for the vehicle. We can see the expected range versus the actual from a real vehicle in the fleet. To build this graph, the component developer used Chart.js, a popular charting library. With current Locker, there are slight limitations to the functionality that's supported. But this component is running with next-gen Locker enabled. The Pulsar developer had to make no changes to have all Chart.js functionality just work. With next-gen Locker, there are much fewer constraints to enabling any third-party library, not just Chart.js. Products and tools like Prism.js, Webpack, analytics libraries like Google Analytics will work in your components with little to no modifications. Another heavily requested feature by our developer community that we've enabled is cross namespace communication. If you'd like to import a component from another namespace or share base classes across namespaces, you're now able to do so. This all while maintaining the security and variance and measures enforced by the current Locker version and more. If you're interested in NextGen Locker, feel free to reach out to your account rep or me directly. We'll be expanding the pilot to add more and more customers soon. That concludes our Pulsar demo. If you'd like to learn more, you can find this entire demo and instructions on how to deploy it on GitHub at the following URL. So go ahead, try out using base components, styling hooks, and all of the included custom Lightning Web components yourselves and give, give us feedback about what you'd like to see incorporated next. For even more demos and real LWC code, check out our LWC recipes. Now, what about that sneak preview that was promised at the beginning of the talk? I haven't forgotten. So far, we've spent time going through how you can build rich, powerful, and highly customizable UI experiences using LWC, but there has been one big thing missing. What about the data? Just as I shared with LWC built on the latest web standards in the open, releasing base components to NPM, and the next generation of the Locker service striving to support more and more third-party libraries directly, we want to keep going with that open culture. So I'm really happy to announce that we're adopting another open standard, GraphQL. Imagine that Pulsar developer wanted to query data across multiple objects and have just one JSON payload uh, containing all of the results returned. When we finish support for GraphQL, they'll be able to do just that directly in LWC. With our implementation, we're also keeping caching and performance in mind. The records retrieved through a GraphQL query will abide by the same cache policies that are enforced by the Lightning Data Service allowing for record reuse across all components on a page and significantly reduce trips to the server. GraphQL will introduce a very powerful mechanism for components to load specific records and fields they require to build relevant and dynamic experiences for their users. We can't wait to share more with you as the implementation progresses, so stay tuned for future pilot news. 
If you're eager to try out GraphQL functionality on top of our existing UI REST APIs directly without LWC and give us very early developer feedback, please reach out to me directly. And that's a wrap. We'll continue to listen to your feedback and do our best to build a platform that meets your needs. For more information around styling hooks, base components, and LWC, feel free to visit any of the links called out throughout the talk. And don't be afraid to speak up, ask questions, and make suggestions. Thank you so much for tuning in and enjoy the rest of your sessions. Capato DevOps helps you deliver innovation on Salesforce with more speed, reliability, and visibility than ever before. Give your teams the platform they need to manage development with a pipeline manager. Release your innovation on demand with continuous delivery and automated testing. And continuously improve using the intelligence of DevOps 360 to optimize every step of the process. Check out Capato DevOps on App Exchange to learn more.